Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Entry requirements into the CNMI are changed again. Also tonight, the CNMI is okay for travel by Korean officials. And it was an attempt for an escape to Guam. We have the details on the two Mariners. In sports, the U18 National Boys Soccer Team sees Guam, conquers Guam. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skip Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skip Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. Websites like the CDC website, Mayo Clinic website, any established um, hospital system or healthcare system. I suspect that Kaiser has a lot of information out there. I would go um, to known websites, WebMD, Healthline, they all have a, a, a lot of information that is reliable and w well thought out. I would much less go to blogs and the individuals who are looking at it from their own perspective and not necessarily science. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries the juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team and you cannot spell team without me. M-E. Shot. An opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. So let's go for a save, a strikeout, a knockout punch. That's our goal. V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win and we can all celebrate. Half a day, Tirawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, August 2nd, 2021. Entry requirements are changed once more due to the Delta variant's increased transmissibility. Beginning tomorrow, August 3rd, the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation and the Governor's COVID-19 Task Force will implement on-arrival PCR screening for all inbound travelers, including those who are fully vaccinated. This comes after guidance from the CDC regarding the COVID-19 Delta variant. According to Hospital Chief Esther Munia, the Delta variant's increased transmissibility underscores the need to screen all travelers on arrival. 
Mwonyi continues on saying that the best tool against the pandemic is the COVID-19 vaccination. The CHCC is also urging residents to continue wearing masks indoors and around individuals whose vaccination is unknown. If fully vaccinated travelers receive a negative test result, they will be able to quarantine with restriction of movement, which means they will only be permitted for work and essential movement only. They will be able to choose their lodging, but they must verify vaccination status and they must pass the household assessments. All travelers are also required to show up to their fifth day testing. If any individual tests positive, they will be isolated at the government quarantine facility. For comments, concerns, or inquiries, you may contact the task force hotline at 287-0046. Government officials from South Korea says they are pleased with the COVID-19 protective measures in the Commonwealth. Two officials from the South Korea Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transportation had to see with their own eyes if the CNMI was keeping its promise of being a safe destination for travel. They were in Saipan for three days. So the purpose of coming here is to do a site inspection to ensure that what we have presented in Korea is what is actually happening here in the CNMI. Back in June, Governor Torres led the CNMI delegation to South Korea for the signing of the travel bubble agreement. Most of the language focused on COVID testing and vaccination. MVA's managing director Priscilla Iakpo states that the visit of the Korean officials had some pretty positive feedback. They were very impressed with the COVID-19 safety protocols. They have gone through the list of establishment that's part of the WTTC safe travel programs that the MBA had launched. And best of all, they really got to um, experience how our hospitality is like just just the interactions, you know, with our local people, they really said that they will come back with their families this time around. MVA continues to monitor the quarantine procedures and weekly flights from the travel bubble. Thursdays will be from Tiway and then Jeju and Asiana will be on Saturdays. And so for those who are um, unvaccinated coming from Korea, it is still required that they come to the CNMI with a negative PCR test. And for those who are not vaccinated, they will be quarantining at PIC. And for those who are vaccinated, they have the option to stay at Saipan Royal Resort or Kensington Hotel. The two individuals who couldn't be found for nearly two weeks were actually making their way to Guam to seek asylum. The journey of Xiao Wei Quinn and Yun Li Red was to seek asylum in Guam for their overstaying in the CNMI. Credible sources tell KSPN that the two individuals entered as tourists back in 2019. On July 18 of this year, Quinn and Red left Saipan on a 14-foot-long black Kodiak skiff. Three days later, the spouse of one of the individuals called the CNMI Department of Public Safety after being concerned of their well-being. The U.S. Coast Guard then launched a search on July 21st. After covering 14,000 square nautical miles with no signs of the individuals, the Coast Guard officially suspended the search on July 27. But then on Friday, July 30, 3 p.m., the Coast Guard Sector Guam watch standers were made aware that Quinn and Red were recovered 65 miles northwest of Rota by the merchant vessel Mito. They were then safely transported back to Saipan. Over the weekend, six more arriving passengers test positive for COVID-19. According to CHCC, the individuals were identified through travel screening and was confirmed positive for the virus on arrival into the CNMI on July 30. These cases did not report any COVID-19 vaccination. The individuals have been quarantined and are actively monitored. CHCC has already initiated contact tracing for the most immediate contacts of the new confirmed cases. That brings the total number of COVID-19 cases to 196 since March 28th of last year. Coming up, watch the highlights of a solid weekend event. Stay tuned.
$1,500. That's what's up for grabs when the road to 80 continues with this week's featured sponsor, POI Aviation. Watch the next drawing Thursday, August 5th on the Road to 80 CNMI Facebook page. Register for your shot today at vaccinatecnmi.com or call 682-SHOT. The Road to 80 is brought to you by the Office of the Governor, COVID-19 Task Force, Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, Joe 10 Enterprises, Bridge Capital, Tan Holdings, and more. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. So up until now, the only ways we've had to fight COVID are closing things down, which has been really hard on people here in the CNMI. Um, a lot of people have lost jobs, and a lot of people have lost incomes. Uh, and although it's been effective, it's not sustainable. It's not something we can do forever. Um, vaccination is a way for us to safely resume a lot of those things that bring vibrancy to the CNMI, to hopefully reopen to tourism in some safe capacity, to get people back to work in various service industries. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Civic Park Center in Susupi was live on Saturday night as many came out to join the Hoffa Day and Tito Summer Jam. Here is A Sights and Sounds. Enjoy. The first um, event MBA is hosting here on Saipan. Um, we are very excited um, as this is one way that we can warm up our community and to also encourage more of our visitors to enjoy what the CNMI has to offer through our events here in the CNMI. Okay, we got barbecue ribs, we got hot dogs, we got sausages, we got corn, we got chicken calibre, we got barbecue chicken, but you name it, we got it, bro. Oh yeah, boy. It's a really uh, long-awaited moment in our uh, in our time since we've had the pandemic. Uh, so it's a really good sign to see our economy uh, taking a step forward as we begin to fully reopen our borders. It's a good event for everyone to come out, enjoy good music, great food vendors, and drinks as well. Just an all-around fun time.
over on Guam, military activity is louder than ever. KUAM gives us the details. Hafa day, Sinamai. I'm Tyler Matanani. Here's what's making news on Guam. Hundreds of airmen are currently on island for Operation Pacific Iron 2021. Military aircrafts flying in unison and conducting various simulated combat flight operations is surely a sight to see. The Guam International Airport Authority, along with the U.S. Pacific Air Forces, is in full exercise mode. More than 35 aircrafts and approximately 800 airmen were deployed to Guam and the CNMI for Operation Pacific Iron 2021. The hub and spoke exercise is in support of the 2018 National Defense Strategy. GIAA Executive Manager John Kanata explains. Anderson Air Force Base is a hub and you have different locations around the region as a spoke. GIAA, Guam International Airport Authority, is a spoke. It allows airmen to demonstrate their ability to adapt and execute flight operations to real life. Just six aircrafts are operating out of GIAA, but they're also being hosted at Anderson Air Force Base and Northwest Justin. Field. Just in case real world uh, events uh, take it where they have to operate out of Guam International Airport Authority. It's a learning experience. It's the first time in, in, in a long time that uh, uh, we've had these exercises to Guam. And first time that we had F-22s. Those are the most sophisticated fighter uh, jets, uh, air support area fighter jets for the uh, U.S. Uh, um, inventory. GIAA's role in the exercise includes ensuring fuel is readily available for the aircrafts and that aircraft crash and rescue firefighters are ready to respond just in case there are any issues with them coming in for an emergency landing. They must also make sure that the fighter crafts integrate with the commercial airlines coming in. Kanata thanked island residents for their patience and understanding as the airport does its part in support of these joint military training exercises, which will continue into the second week of August. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUM.com or downloading the KUM News app, available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. Sounds good. All right, coming up, a uh, sports golf history lesson. Put away your books. This is information you won't find in any book. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. All workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Drop into the Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. It's fast food that's good for you. Our July Smoothie of the Month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. It's a healthy blend of 450 calories that's perfect for a meal replacement or supplement. Shake it up at Gold's Gym. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? 
If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. The Tan Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. We're in a race whether we know it or not. And build our new normal. Enough of my to be out. Let's activate Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Buenos sports fans, the U18 National Boys Soccer Team spent last week on Guam training and playing and, and winning. Thursday evening at the Guam National Training Facility in Harmon, the NMI in white versus Guam U17 squad. The first half was scoreless. Second half saw a goal fest. Caden Church dribbles down deep into the box where he was triple teamed, so he passes out to number six, Brian Lubau for the Rocket Blast and the NMI lead. Later, Church banged in a spectacular goal in what turned out to be the difference in a 2-1 NMI victory. The week before, the NMI girls went 2-1 versus Guam. Oh, by the way, Guam a FIFA member and NMI's uh, FIFA application is still pending. All right, tonight, Sports History 101. We're going to look at the oldest sports club that's continuing to exist on the island. The Saipan Country Club was established in the 60s. Tom Tepetep remembers the big old mango tree on hole number nine. This, this tree looks old, I is it? It is old because it used to be here when we were in our, uh, during our childhood years. So this was a live one and I'm glad it's still here, but uh, that's an indication of how far we've come, Bob. Yeah, the tree is dead. <laughs> Well, the old Aces aren't dead. In fact, they're alive and well 46 years after the original old Aces basketball team was formed in 1975, as recalled by old Ace Tony Satur. Speech! 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 Who wants to back left? Yeah! Great to whip! Jolie Zama, where's Jolie Zama? He said he's coming back. Right? Those are the first five of old Aces. I mean, not only players, but there were first five. Ray and Joe were guards, wow. right? Uh, Louis Tilpo, forward. Uh, Ambrose uh, Gomoro, forward. Mm. And Buck Odyssey, center. Saturday, the old Aces held a golf tournament fundraiser at the oldest golf course on Saipan, home of the first golfers here. The late, great Jess Wobble told me that when he was younger, he played golf with clubs made out of tang and tang, and I didn't believe them, but I do now. Well, Bob, this is uh, an illustration of how we 
would look at the trees, just cut them down and then shape them. And, you know, off we go to the greens with the likes of Jess Wabo, Tony Sato, Manny Mangarello, and uh, the older guys. Tars Olapai? Tars Olapai, the older guys that used to live around here and we would come in and just whack the ball away with Tang Tang. And that's how we got, that's how we fell in love with golf. So. That was the birth of golf here too, right? Absolutely. Because that's when this course just opened. That's right. It was in the 60s that we used to be caddies and we would cut the tantans and then just go out for a free game of golf with tantan, of course. <laughs> Jess used a cross-handed grip. Elias Rangamar imitates him, or at least tries to. Check this out. Okay. Jess Wobble 2.0. Same, same handle with Jess. Same grip. Same grip as Jess Wobble. Uh, well, let's see if you hit it in like Jess did. Uh, just like Jess. If it okay, goes in, we just... Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unlike Jess. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Jess? <laughs> Selected alumni and their descendants were given certificates of recognition and appreciation, and one of those was yours truly. <laughs> put this because my wall's already covered. <laughs> yeah. but, so I'm going to put it on my refrigerator because I go there a lot. <laughs> there you go, Thank Bob. you very much, John. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Bob. 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 That was nice. Hey, Ben, did you get that? I got that. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Here's our latest weather report regarding the rain. For the record, Homeland Security on Capitol Hill collected 13.11 inches of rain in the month of July. In the last 24 hours, 1.68 inches, so that historic drought is history. Today's high was 83, the low 70, 70, even the 82% tomorrow. More monsoon drippings here and there. Southerly winds, 10 to 20, high around 85, low 78, seas 3 to 5 feet. Sunrise at 6 straight up, a low tide at 1031, followed by a High tide at 5.33 and then sunset at, even if you don't see it, 6.46. That is your new sports and weather at the beginning of the week. See you here uh, back in the middle of the week. Good night.